Yes. Yeah, so let's keep the AI drum roll going, right? Um, in case you haven't tuned yet out yet, you can tune out now. No, you know, so AI, it's, I, I took away three biggies from, from Dell Tech World. They had five themes they were focused on, but to me, there were three I was really interested. Um, what it's doing in AI, what it's doing in multi-cloud, and what it's doing in security. AI, to me, was, like, fascinating. You know, you always, you think of Dell sometimes as, you know, fast follower can be a negative term, but it's a really positive term. They're very pragmatic. They wait until ma technologies mature, and then they kind of jump in and, and they do a great job of, of positioning themselves with a really strong portfolio to back them up. On the AI front, they kind of jumped out in front. Um, they announced this partnership with NVIDIA where they uh, co-developed a system. It's the XC9680, NVIDIA, Intel, uh, and Dell working together. It's a two-way Intel server with up to eight, um, <laughs> yes, that's eight H100 GPUs built into it. Um, TDP is through the world, power ratings through the world. Weight is like 240 pounds. Um, but it comes completely configured to support your guest generative AI um, environment, right? They've got pre-trained models that you can drop in. And Pat, I like the way you talked about, you know, AI and generative AI and kind of the global versus local. You know, if, if for folks that are listening or watching, um, if you think about generative AI in the, in the enterprise and like what's the real use of it, Think of like a law firm, like a really big ropes and gray law firm that has been in existence forever and has uh, decades of, of uh, case law that's been you know digitalized or digitized. And some young associate needs to come in and do a search on you know some um, some obscure kind of case that they're working on. This domain specific um, uh, la large language model allows Gropes and Ray in that case to quickly create a Gropes and Ray um, generative AI session, if you will, or, or um, language model. That makes it very easy for that lawyer to go in, that young lawyer to go in and find relevant results to his search. You know, rather than getting a whole bunch of junk that they have to sift through, they get super relevancy. That's the yeah. cool thing about generative AI. And that's what they did with NVIDIA and Intel. Sorry, Pat, if you want to jump in on that. No, 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 sir, at all. I think that was a... Uh, that was a, it was a big one, and I think Dell's challenge on on AI is going to be to convince people why the training and the inference is best done uh, on prem or on the edge, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to add uh, uh, multi cloud, right? Multi cloud was a big a big one here, and you know I've been on a tear on the hybrid multi cloud for probably ten years now, and it's nice mm -hmm. to see Dell uh, come out create services that interconnect. Uh, on-prem edge and the major public clouds, uh, yeah. but also uh, putting services, uh, and I like, you know, they had uh, ground ground to cloud, yeah, and then they had cloud to ground. Yeah. Cloud to ground were those Dell pieces of software, particularly uh, right now storage, that interconnect um, the public cloud with on-prem, and then ground to cloud are, are these services where you essentially uh, Kubernetes and storage uh, management layer services. And I believe they're going to add a, a networking layer to that uh, in the future. And one thing I really appreciated uh, that, that, that Dell did that, quite frankly, a lot of vendors don't do who claim multi-cloud is they showed vendors. They showed yep. vendor names, yep. right? Mm -hmm. AWS logo, GCP, Azure. You know, I want to see, I want to see Oracle Cloud and the IBM Cloud. Uh, but also um, Red Hat and, yeah, and VMware that they did pull it all together. And one big thing hit me. Dell has been known as this company who can really put together different parts of the industry, right? Now, they, they started in hardware, right? Like, <clears throat> how do I assemble a PC or a server or something like that? Yeah. And, and that was their prowess. When you think about it, the hybrid multi-cloud is a, a collection of things that you put together and integrate. And I feel like Dell is pulling together those integration points. Yeah. And not only do they get, you know, pay pay per service, let's say if they're, you know, managing uh, Kubernetes uh, through the hybrid multi-cloud, uh, but also pulling in storage. They were very clear that the starting point for all of this is storage. Yep. That is their, that's their, 
that's their emanating point. And, you know, they are the biggest storage company on the planet. Uh, so that makes sense. And still most of the data, planet data is still uh, on prem. So I, I, I like, I like where they're starting. Uh, they're definitely, you know, HP with GreenLake definitely had, you know, that, that early lead, uh, HPE just by definition does offer more services, but, uh, Dell is definitely, uh, making some nice progress here. Yeah. You know, Pat, it's funny cause you talk about, um, the partnerships and the theme at Dell tech world was, you know, it was like innovation to, to advance, uh, people, right. Which is a great theme, but the key on innovation there, I think when we hear innovation, we always think about technology and developing new technology. And they've done that, like the XC9680 is a great example, but they also done an amazing job of innovating through partnerships. So, you know, on the AI front, it was NVIDIA, Intel, Dell. Um, on the on the multi-cloud, it was all of those cloud providers and VMware and Red Hat. And then on security front, they did the same thing. It's not like they came out and said, we're going to build, you know, the next great mousetrap that everybody needs to go buy. What they yeah. said is, to what Will said, right, 30 to 50 uh, point solution vendors uh, in every mid-sized company, much more at enterprises. Dell's saying, look, we can't do this. We're not going to be the answer, but, and we know you have all of these solutions out there. So we're going to bring everybody together um, and we're going to give you these curated solutions to help drive zero trust um, uh, protections. And by the way, we're going to set up a lab where you can go and you can take these environments and you can test them and you can do all kinds of validation that meets government us government specs that's really cool stuff right there's not a new product they announced around that but to me that was maybe the most compelling security announcement i've heard this year um yeah. out of out of any company so I, sorry yeah. i was just going to say matt you know i i agree and this plays really well to dell's strengths with focusing on industry standards and ecosystems and that sort of thing. And I think that, that you know, that project, what, Fort Zero yep. um, is involving 30 vendors. And like you said, nothing really net new, but more of a packaging exercise. What I also really like about that is that Dell is the single point. Mm -hmm. They're the integrator for all of that. So single point of accountability yep. for not only the planning, the deployment, but also the ongoing management. So. Um, super strong, you know, and I, you know, I tuned into the live cast. I was traipsing around Italy with my daughters uh, last week in Rome and Venice. Um, the other thing that really stood out for me from Dell Tech World, and by the way, um, I'll be publishing a Forbes article later today. It's with our editor and I'll be linking back to the article, Matt, that you wrote. I, it was a great article. You go into a lot of depth mm -hmm. around AI and security and some other elements, but sustainability and, you know, and that's no shock, right? I mean, every company has a focus on sustainability. We were talking about Cisco earlier. They're certainly a leader with yeah. what they're doing with net zero and enabling that. And as I thought about sustainability, I also started thinking about some of the operational expense lines for not only enterprises, but service providers. For service providers, guess what their number one OPEX line is? It's their energy bill, yeah. right? Yeah. And so this has a real impact on, on you know not only mobile network deployments, the 5G deployments, but also what enterprises are considering with um, traditional networking deployments as well as private networking deployments. Yeah, you know, well, it's funny you say that because um, in my article, and you can find it at, no, I'm just kidding, but uh, <laughs> in the piece I wrote around cooling, there's an uh, around sustainability, I was amazed at the number of um, cooling companies, uh, you know, immersion cooling, liquid, uh, direct liquid cooling, direct to chip cooling that were on the show floor um, yep. out showing their wares. It used to be, it was kind of interesting when Paul talks about quantum computing, my head immediately goes to science fiction. Uh, and in the cooling world, I think of like immersion cooling and, and some of this, uh, these other types as science fiction for mechanics, right? Um, it's really cool and interesting, but it's, it's gaining a lot of steam. And there was a lot of emphasis put on Intel had it in their booth, Dell had it in their booth, yeah. Schneider obviously had it in there. It's a, sustainability is, it's not just real, it's becoming operationalized. 